right, welcome everybody. Thank you for your patience. Uh, my name is Mark Weiss. I am one of the board members here at Walker's Point Center for the Arts. Thank you very much for attending tonight's uh, production of Baby Wings. All of the proceeds from the tickets sold here tonight go back to benefit Walker's Point Center for the Arts. Uh, just a little bit about us. We're more than an art gallery, more than this little performance space. The main mission of Walker's Point Center for the Arts is providing arts education and opportunities for underserved Milwaukee youth. We provide uh, arts programs for about 8,000 kids through programs at MPS, a summer arts camp, uh, and some on-site after-school programs that we run here. So um, most of the revenue that we get is very target specific, so it's targeted to those programs that we offer. We don't have a lot of general purpose revenue, which helps us with building maintenance, keeping the lights on, that kind of stuff. That's the purpose of this show tonight. Our goal uh, through our run was to try and raise $2,000 for the center. Um, we're not quite there yet, but we're close. Um, if you can find it in your heart on the way out, we have a little donation box. If you can drop a couple bucks in there, we'd greatly appreciate it, but please don't feel obligated. Um, we are also having uh, a fundraiser, uh, a larger fundraiser here over at Anodyne Coffee. Uh, there's information. Uh, it is right, isn't it? Yeah. There is a website on our WPCA website about that. It's a $40 ticket. It gets you dinner. Um, there's a raffle. There's uh, some silent auction items. So it's a great opportunity to help support uh, Walker's Point Center for the Arts. And next year, we are celebrating our 30th anniversary. So 25 years on 9th Street, 9th and National, about five or six years here on 5th Street. So we've been around for a while, and we're trying to do a little better job of letting folks know that we're here and what we do. So that's what brings you all here tonight, seeing the show. Thanks very much for coming, uh, and we're going to get started. Experience it for yourself one day. Oh, 
well, I would like to have a child. Well, absolutely. Well, when the time is right. And when I do, I'm going to name her after you. Me? That's why me? Well, because you are like the sister I never had, but always wanted. But don't you have a sister? Technically, yes. But we've never gotten along. We have nothing in common. Never have. On the other hand, you and I, we're like two sides of the same coin. Really, that's... Oh, is that her? I put her down for a nap just before you came. Yeah, college boys. College 
was the most exciting and frightening and mind-altering time of my life. I experienced so much, and so much happened. Well, you remember. Oh, yes. Well, clearly, I wasn't very well prepared for any of it. You know, college life and being on my own. I had led a pretty sheltered existence up until that point. Well, college exposed me to a world I didn't even know existed, and I admit I didn't always know how to handle things. Yeah, you know, I, I made my share of mistakes. Thankfully, not all of them tragic. Well, things worked out in the end. Well, yes, they did. And in large part because of you. Really, I don't know about that. Oh, yes! Your influence! Well, let's be honest, you bailed me out so many times. I look back and I don't think I would have graduated if it hadn't been for you. No, 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 no. I wouldn't have made it if I didn't have you to pull me through. I think you're giving me too much but credit. All these college memories came flooding back to me at that Barry Manilow concert. <laughs> you know, leave it to Barry Manilow to speak to the heart of our relationship. <laughs> well, when he finished singing that song, it resonated with me, you know? It, it you know, really spoke to me. And I couldn't stop thinking about it. Was there ever such a time? Then suddenly it's done. <laughs> well, inspiration comes from the most unlikely places, right? I heard that song, it was like a a light bulb clicking on. And I made up my mind then and there that I had let enough time go by. When I promised myself that as soon as I got home, I was going to drive straight down here to see you. And here you are. Here I am. Oh, sitting here with you now. It's like no time has gone by at all. I mean, doesn't it seem like it was just last week we were sharing the apartment on Mifflin Street? It does to me. You know, even today, five years after graduating, there'll be a day when I wake up in the morning just panicking. Like, I'm late for class. <laughs> Seems like a lifetime to me. Well. That's because you have a new life. You have all this. Well, me, I, I admit I haven't moved on. I can't let that time go. It was so important to me. And I loved that apartment, <laughs> even though it was such a dump. It was a dump. <laughs> and I was never exactly sure how many people lived there. Now, our other two roommates, I can take a lot of guests. Yes, yeah, Cindy and Penny. Oh, they were quite a pair. <laughs> They're friends of yours from high school, right? Well, sort of. The three of us worked together at Capitol Brewery. That's where I got to know them. Cindy had an uncle or a cousin or some relation who worked there. And he said he would get us a summer job after our college summer break. It was a good summer job. Working at the brewery, paid well. I remember the two of them would steal cases of beer. <laughs> Or rather, coerce some poor dumb guy into stealing beer for them. They were promised that if he stole the beer for them, they'd mess around with them. <laughs> I can totally see them doing that. Only, of course, they wouldn't mess around. They wouldn't even share the beer. I think the poor guy got fired and lost his job for stealing the beer for them. <laughs> well, they didn't like me because I complained that their overnight boyfriends would make a mess of our bathroom. But I didn't think that I should have to go into my own bathroom in the morning to get ready for school to find some guy standing there with the door open, half naked, peeing everywhere. Like, it's uh, no big deal. Just with a big, dumb grin on his face. You know, guys have no shame. Or aim, for that matter. <laughs> they always pay their share of the rent. I don't know. Didn't you stay in touch? No, we were never close. Oh. Well, did they graduate, do you know? You know, I don't. Oh. Well, as it turns out, I happen to know that neither one of them graduated. <laughs> I can't say I'm surprised. Neither one of them took too much time in class. If you knew that, then why did you ask me? Well, I didn't want to tell you what happened to them just to have you say I knew that. But seeing as I didn't know that, I'm glad I told you. How did you know they didn't graduate? Google. I'm sorry? Well, I Googled them. <laughs> yeah, I look people up from time to time on the internet. Oh, I've done a lot of people that I've lost touch with. Acquaintances and 
you know, classmates, you know, old boyfriends. It's, it's interesting. And I like to see how they're doing relative to how I'm doing. You know, I, I use it as kind of a <laughs> measuring stick to gauge my own life's progress. Oh, you'd be surprised how much information you can find on the web. Now, I really don't even know what people did before Google. So, seriously, Google is a godsend. <coughs> I really think it's helped people stay in touch. Well, it's helped me and you stay in touch. It's how I found the birth announcement for your baby. Christine, sure, I mailed you a birth announcement. Emily, I have no doubt that you mailed it. I really don't know why you didn't get it. Well, I recently changed addresses, so it's possible it got lost in between. You're not living with your mom anymore? I never lived with my mother. I thought you lived with your mom. After your boyfriend locked you up. He did not lock me out. Grassy, right? He got to live together. He changed the lock. Right. Completely different than locking me out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who does that, huh? What kind of person? That's psychotic. And wasn't there a restraining order? Well, it was a toxic relationship. You got lucky with Mitchell. I know. But, look, I don't want to talk about Bradley, okay? I'm over him. I've moved on. That's right. Move on and don't look back. You know, he wasn't ready for a commitment. I can see that so clearly now. But hey, <laughs> hindsight's always 2020, right? What doesn't kill us make us stronger, right? Yes, exactly. So let's just say that my relationship with Bradley wasn't my most shining achievement. Yeah. But I got through it. And what helped me get through it, what means so much to me now, especially, is that you were there for me. And you continue to be there for me. I mean, it means so much that you and I haven't lost touch. So many people don't make the effort, you know? And that would be so sad, right? Because you and I, we were such close friends in college. Well, college was the most... Well, we hit it off right from the start, didn't we? From the first time we met. I often think about that. About how we met. How random it was. <laughs> I mean, out of the dozens of ads for roommate in the student union, I choose yours. Completely randomly. No rhyme. No reason. It was as if fate brought us together. It's like... You and I, we were meant to be best friends, don't you think? Christy, best friends. Best friends, well, that's how I feel too. I am so glad you feel that way. Oh, I don't even know if I ever told you this, but I was obsessed with you right away from the first time I met you. Well, you were so nice to me. And people weren't always nice to me. I mean, to this day. so chic, without trying to be, and, and, and sophisticated, you know, without all the pretense, beautiful, confident, all the things that I wanted to be, but couldn't. I wasn't nearly as together as you thought I was. In my eyes, you were something to aspire to. Really, thank you, but even this time when I... A time I'm what? I can't believe I was about to tell you this, but it was what were you gonna say? What I wanted to be you. How's that? No, oh, it's embarrassing to say out loud, but yeah, I wanted to be you. Why? Well, I kind of had a girl crush. A crush? Oh no, not like that. No, <laughs> no, more like a. If I could trade places with anyone in the world, kind of crush. I just wanted to walk a day in your shoes and know what it felt like to have people look at me the way they looked at you. This is a complete surprise to me. Well, I don't know why it should be such a surprise to you. I mean, you were the it girl. <laughs> you know, popular without trying, beautiful without all that drama, and superior without being alienating. <laughs> I loved the way that you wore your hair and how you dressed, and you were such... Well, you still are. I mean, look at you, even today, you look amazing. <laughs> Six 
months after giving birth, and nobody would even know. It's been eight months, but that's not nice. Don't feel like you have to tell me. Of walking in no, your shoes. No, don't feel like you have to tell me. Sometimes I would wear your clothes. <laughs> My clothes. Sometimes, yeah. Well, Cindy and Penny and I wear each other's clothes all the time. Yeah, but I didn't take clothes out of your closet. I took clothes out of your laundry and put it on. <laughs> like dirty laundry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, because I wanted something that you had worn, something that still smelled like you. I really don't know how to respond to that. Okay, well, don't worry. I'm over my girl crush. <laughs> and I'm not going to steal any of your clothes while I'm here. <laughs> but seriously, even though you might not have known this, you were a huge influence on me. <laughs> I mean, you helped shape the person I am today, and I am very grateful. All this is news to me. Now, I think that's why I've made such an effort to make sure that you and I didn't lose touch. And granted, it's been tougher to get together in the last couple of years, especially since you moved down here. Mitchell's job brought us here. It was a great opportunity. We couldn't pass it up. No, I know why you moved down here. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I don't mind being the one to make all the effort to stay in touch. You know, like I said, I like doing Google searches. Like I'm a CSI or something, it's fun. I know I can make much more effort with a new house and a new husband and a new baby. Oh, don't be silly. You've got a lot going on in your life. And like I said, I like doing Google searches and I don't mind being the one to do all the heavy lifting in this relationship. You know, you know I'm happy to do it. No, really, I am. I mean, I don't have a husband or a baby to worry about. You know the man you love? Bradley was like, what, four years ago? Four years, three months, three weeks, and a day. But now I'm sort of in between relationships right now. It's surprising. I'm surprised no one hasn't snatched you up. Yeah. No, I'm available. Imagine that. Yeah, I know. Hard to believe, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, does Mitchell have a brother? No, 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 he doesn't. <laughs> well, that's too bad. I mean, we could have been in-laws. Imagine that. So, what have you been up to since I saw you last? Oh, no, not much. I mean, <laughs> my life isn't all that interesting. I haven't seen you in three years. Three years, six months, two weeks, a day. <laughs> so, I'm sure a lot has been going on in three years. So tell me, what's going on in your life? I'm dying to hear what you've been up to. Yeah? Absolutely. Well, I certainly have had my share of experiences. Yeah. Oh, boy. How do you boil down the last three years of your life? I mean, how often does an acquaintance, somebody that you haven't seen for such a long time, said to you, what have you been up to? And what have you said? Well, you would typically say something like, you know, not too much, or same old, same old, or maybe you'd say something like, I'm under a restraining order, but you knew that, or I've just been released from prison, or typical stuff. What? Did you just say you just been released from prison? I did say prison. <clears throat> yes, I did. And I'm not ashamed of it. Well, I'm not proud of it. I've, I've come to terms with it. It was a, really, it was just a, a misunderstanding. Too much trouble, you can add a splash of vodka? 
But, like, I have a... Oh, yeah, but not too much trouble. You know, maybe, you know, this much. This much? Yeah, maybe, you know, just this much. Just a splash to help me unwind. You know, I'm still a little tense yet from the drive down. I understand. Driving to Chicago can get stressful. Yes, the traffic. So I'll add some muffins. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank lemonade. you. You painted this. Yes, yes I did. Oh, well, it's beautiful. Yes, thank you. No, really, I'm so impressed. I didn't even know you painted it. I took it up recently. Well, you have real talent. You know, I, I especially like this part right here. Actually, I've been working with Lucy Eleanor. Are you familiar with her work? No? She's real familiar in the Chicago art circles. Very gifted. Her work is like ethereal, you know? Ethereal? Yeah, yes, I know what you're saying. Lucy has been such an inspiration, so insightful, giving and unselfish. I learned a lot from her. She's... I'm going to be a part of her next show. What? Are you serious? She has a show coming up at the Co-Prosperity Sphere, and she's invited me to participate. That painting will be in the show. Oh, Emily, that's fantastic! It's incredible. I'm working really hard in her studio on some new paintings. I'm trying to go in a different direction and explore some new... I mean, I'm only contributing a couple pieces, but it's a really great opportunity for someone so new to the art form. I'd say so. Lucy has been such a great friend and mentor. She's introduced me to a lot of people in the art world, helped me make some connections. She and I have formed this, this bond, a deep, personal connection, like sisters, I suppose. <laughs> Lucy Eleanor, uh -huh. you said, I'm going to have to Google her. It all started when I joined a continuing ed class. I never thought much would come from my paintings. I just thought it was a creative outlet. Lucy taught the class and she saw something in me. She opened up a word I never knew existed. It's very exciting. I'm really grateful. Wow, you are... Well, I mean, is there anything you can't do? According to Mitchell, make a proper drink. Oh, well, I'll be the judge of that. All we have is beluga gold. I'm not sure if you're particular with your vodkas, but... Beluga Gold is Mitchell's favorite. Oh, I'm sure it's excellent. Are you having one? I'm still nursing. Oh, of course you are. Idiot that I am. No, 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 you're fine. Well, uh, cheers. Hmm. <laughs> this is just perfect. Really? Oh, like everything you do. I'm sure my husband would agree to that. Well, your husband is about the luckiest man on planet Earth, okay? And if I ever get a chance to meet him, what's up that much you at the? That's right. You didn't get to make it to the wedding. No, I couldn't be at the wedding, sadly. But thank you so much for inviting me. I was so excited to get the invitation. Yeah, I kept it. I still have it. It's so beautiful. I was really disappointed when you couldn't make it to the wedding, and so was Mitchell. He really wanted to meet you. He did? Well, he's not so much about you. 
He has? You've talked to him about me? He's heard all the college stories. He was really disappointed that he didn't get to see you for himself. Well, I so wanted to be at the wedding, but... Well, you know, destination weddings can be very expensive to attend. Especially when the destination is the Seychelles. I know, it was pretty amazing. Mitchell and his father went there on a fishing trip. Mitchell's father wanted us to marry there. He arranged the travel. Well, it's on the other side of the world. I know, it was like an 18-hour flight. I mean, a person only gets married like what, two, maybe three times a lot. <laughs> so nothing cheap about it, right? Oh, such an unbelievable setting. Mitchell and I riding there on horseback. Horseback? I know it's pretty corny, but it was really romantic. Mitchell surprised me with a beautiful white stallion. We rode along the beach to, on the beautiful white stallion to a bright cove where everyone was there to meet us. It was like something out of a fairy tale. It sounds like it. Oh, it was so, so beautiful there. Yes, I, I googled it. <laughs> right. The picture just don't do it much justice. You have to see it for yourself. The temperature is like 83 degrees, but the trade winds make it comfortable. You have to go. It's well worth the time and effort it takes to get you there. Well, it's most definitely on my list. You know, Rome, Paris, the Seychelles, Chambers. Chambers. Oh, yeah, they have an Ikea there, don't they? In Chambers? Yes. Yeah. I've never been. Is it amazing? I can't. It would be. It's Swedish or something, isn't it? I don't know. Oh, I am so sorry. I interrupted you. You were talking about your wedding? No, you don't want to hear about all that. Oh, yes, I do. You were saying how beautiful it was in the Seychelles. I know. It was so amazing. It was at the, at the Seychelles where I first got inspired to paint. I was so moved by the beauty of the people and the places. My first paintings were from the photograph that took while I was there. Oh! Well, speaking of photographs, that reminds me. So, since I haven't seen you since you got married, I did bring you a little something. You didn't have to do that. Yeah, it's just a little wedding gift. Not much, but better late than never, right? It's not necessary. Well, of course it is. There's no way that I wouldn't bring my best friend, you know, a woman who's like a, you know, sister to me, a wedding gift, so da 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 Congratulations! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, I'm sorry I didn't wrap it, but I, I think really you wanted to give this- I bet you're wondering how I got that photograph. Well, yes. Facebook. I got it off your Facebook page. Oh, we're not even Facebook friends. No. And why is that? I've only sent you a dozen friend requests. I don't spend much time on Facebook. Oh. Well, it's okay. I'll send you a friend request again. Yes. I'll look for it. Do that. So, do you like the photograph? The photograph. <laughs> I applied a filter. A filter? Yes, to the photograph. You know, I have an app, a photo app on my iPad. I added the uh, bluish hue. I like the way it came out. Yes, very nice. And I did it all on my iPad. You know, I color corrected the photo and applied the filter and I cropped it a bit. Then I took it to Walgreens and had them print it out for me. They do that at Walgreens? Oh yeah, they do a real nice job, don't you think? And then I got a nice frame for it. At Walgreens? Oh yeah, that's odd. What do you mean? It exactly matches the frames of my other photos. On the table? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did notice that. That's a lucky coincidence. I didn't get my frames from Walgreens. Yeah, well, probably not. Probably paid five times what I did. You know, it pays to comparison shop. Thank you. This is very nice. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. I like it very much. I'll just put it right over here with the others. Oh, well, would you look at that? It fits right in. <laughs> like, it belongs there. Yes. Mm, that's such a nice family. Yes, thank you. And this is such a beautiful and impressive home. We're very happy here. It's cheerful. <laughs> Literally, that's what so is. 
When Mitchell and I first arrived here, I said to Mitchell, this house is so cheerful. How can we not be happy here? Well, it's a lovely home. And you're staying home with the baby? Yes, we both felt it was important for me to stay home with her. I admire that. <laughs> you're giving up your career for the baby. I was a little uncertain about it, but after I held my baby in my arms, it was an easy decision. Well, still, it's a career. It wasn't that difficult. It wasn't much of a career. Still, it's an income. I mean, I can only imagine what a house like this would cost. Your husband must do okay. Hmm? Well, financially, he must do okay financially to afford a cheerful house in a cheerful neighborhood and you not working. I think we're very fortunate. I Close to the time to wake her up from a nap. I am so excited to see her. She's vocal, isn't she? She has a little personality already. I bet. Are you going to go up and get her? Not just yet. Oh. Okay, I just thought it. She sounded restless, but you would know best. She has her little routine. Sure, babies are like that. You know, they have schedules, right? She'll let me know when she's ready. When she's ready? Uh-huh. How do you mean? She'll be along. Oh. Oh, you have an au pair. Oh, that must be a big help. No, I don't have an au pair. Mitchell was in favor of hiring one, but I want to raise my baby myself. Sure. Okay, so, no au pair. And what exactly do you mean when you say an eight-month-old will be along? It's close to her feeding time. Okay, but she's an inch. She how manages to get down here from upstairs at like eight months old? How exactly does that transpire? She carried down the stairs in a golden gondola by a cadre of eunuchs to her mother's waiting perfect breast. <laughs> Funny, cadre of eunuchs. You always had an off kill him. Shouldn't she go and check on her? She's okay. I don't know. She sounds fussy. I should go. Christy, listen. Oh. Babies get a little fussy. She'll calm down. We just need to give her time. Oh, no, I totally get that. I mean, this is one of those training techniques, right? You know, you don't come running every time she cries so she learns. So she understands that her parents will continually disappoint her as she grows into adulthood. That's called something. What are you talking about? That's called fervorizing, right? That's it, right? Fervorizing. Fervorizing. Well, that's what I said. Fervorizing. Fervor. No, fervor. Well, I don't know much about it, but fervorizing is the method of using within a child down to sleep. Well, it's pretty controversial, isn't it? Well, I'm not a proponent of this method, but I was reading that fervorizing can cause personality disorders and developmental issues in children who are subjected to it. Like I said, I'm not a proponent of this method. I mean, method, crying is how babies communicate their needs, right? Yes, it's one of the ways, sure. So if a caregiver doesn't answer those cries, it stands to reason that can cause undue amount of stress on the baby. Well, with having a new baby, there's a lot of stress to go around. Oh, are you stressed out? I didn't say that. It's a good kind of stress, mostly. Well, I was reading on this website, this, this parenting website, really informative stuff. There are lots of good information for the first-time parent. I'll send you the link. That's not necessary. Oh. Well, so, there was this study where they demonstrated that high amounts of stress in infancy can cause enduring Enduring negative impacts on the baby's brain. I mean, stuff like how prolonged crying in infants can increase the blood pressure to their little brains and can elevate stress hormones. I can appreciate that, but that's but not result in which being that a perfectly normal baby at birth can, if left to cry it out, over time develop all sorts of personality problems. You don't have to worry about that. No, but they also found that excessive crying was linked with the child developing phobias, like fear of being alone, and separation anxiety, and panic attacks, and even addictive personality disorder. Christy, there are a lot of opinions out there. But I don't know, this is a study at Harvard. You know, lots of super smart people there, okay? I mean, seriously, researchers at Harvard found that high amounts of stress in infancy can lead to an overactive adrenaline system, which 
later can result in increased aggression, impulsivity, and in extreme cases, violence. Okay, I don't dispute any of that, but what about uh, before understand? you say what I think you're gonna say, you just wait. They have also found a persistent crying episodes in infancy was linked with a greater than normal chance of developing ADHD. Why are you reading about that? this? With ADHD, you can have negative consequences like poor school performance and antisocial behavior. I understand all this sounds very serious, which is why if you consistently sue their child and take her crying seriously, then highly effective stress response systems are established that can help your child cope with stress and minimize anxiety later in life. So, I bet you want to go and check on her now, huh? I understand what you're trying to tell me, but you'll see in a few minutes there's something very Because they also it. found that while leaving a child to cry it out does often lead to the crying eventually stopping, it hasn't stopped because the baby has been comforted. It's stopped because the baby has given up any hope that anyone will ever come to offer it comfort. And how sad is that? So what you out. end up with is a detached baby. A detached baby turned into detached children. Detached children are generally less responsive. They can appear not there and are lacking empathy. Okay, none of that is happening. And people who lack empathy have a greater likelihood of displaying sociopathic behaviors like serial killers. Serial killers? Seriously. Well, this is serious stuff. <laughs> Emily, this is Harvard talking, not me. So maybe you want to go and check on her now, because the damage occurring right now can probably never be undone. Excuse me, I'm trying to find an eye. I'm not trying to apply anything. And I don't want to argue with you. I really don't. But this is too important. I can't sit idly by while my goddaughter is left to cry. Yeah, and that separation anxiety kicks in. And isn't that the job of the godparent? To be there with the baby when the parents can't what be? What are you talking about? Just that I want you to see that I am taking my responsibility as godparent very seriously. Who said anything about you being the baby? I'm guy? sorry, Emily. I can't. Okay, just wait, please. No, please. Wait. Hear me out. Okay, let me say this, okay? Okay. I'm sorry. I don't mean to get upset or get out in front of you, or ruin any surprises you may have, or have you think that I'm taking anything for granted because I'm not. I most definitely am not. What makes you think that I want you to be my baby's godparent? Well, I assumed that the reason that you invited me down here I didn't invite you! I know. I probably ruined the surprise, and I'm sorry if I did. But it should be obvious to you by now that I'm so honored that you would consider me for this. And of course I'll do it! Ah, this really makes it feel like I'm being invited into the family. Interesting, I would never invite you to my- Oh, yes, it was such a surprise to me. I was in my car, driving down here, and all of a sudden it hit me. BAM! She's going to ask me to be I didn't ask me. you. I, mean, I knew we were close, but I did not expect this. Oh, breaking news. I am seriously considering moving down here so that I can be closer to you and the baby. Wouldn't that be great? So we could see each other more often. And then the best part is that you would have a babysitter anytime you needed one. And seriously, anytime. I'd be at your beck and call. Heck, I could even move down to the basement. I don't know what to say. Oh, you don't have to say anything, okay? It's done. What? What do you mean? Well, I mean, yes. I accept. <laughs> I'm going to be the best godmother ever. You'll see. And okay, I may have overstepped my boundaries just a little on that whole crying out thing, but I just want you to see how much I care. I think I can't let you move. Okay, if I step on your toes even a little bit, I'm sorry, okay? I'm just very, very excited about this. And I can really use this in my life right now. I don't really have a lot of positive things happening, so this means so much to me. I think 
we have a bit of a misunderstanding. We do. We do, and I apologize. I mean, I have no right to tell you how to raise your daughter. I'm sure that you're a wonderful mother. Just like you're a wonderful painter and a wonderful wife and, and a wonderful friend. Oh, this means so much to me. This is the best thing anybody has ever done for me. Chrissy. No, 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 it's okay. I'm okay. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to get emotional. No, I think I should apologize. I think maybe I haven't been as clear about Oh, I forgive you. No, Chrissy, I'm trying to no, tell you. No, it's okay. You know, we live and let live, right? All is forgiven. You apologize. I accept it. Yes, Chrissy, I'm trying to tell you that. Oh, but from this point on, I only want to focus on the future. Okay, promise me that from this point on, we'll focus on the future. I told you that for a time. Can you do that for me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I want you to understand that I really appreciate the amount of effort you made to stay in touch. I really do. But I have a lot going on in my life right now. With the baby, my husband, my paintings. I just don't have much time to devote to anything else. Or anyone else. Yes, I totally get that. You do? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and that's why I'm here to help. Yes, I know you need help. No, 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 Emily, I want to help out in any way I can. I mean, that's what best friends do for one another, right? And, and actually, this is a really good time since I'm sort of in between jobs. Right you now. lost your job? Well, they kind of let me go while I was in jail. You know, which I totally get. I, I don't feel sorry for myself. I put myself in that place. I have to take responsibility for my own life choices, you know, all that. And then things work out for the best anyway, because now I have the time to devote to you and the baby. That's not what I'm asking. I know. Okay, I know. You're not the kind of person that's going to ask for help. You know, you think you can do everything yourself, that you always have everything under control, but I see right through you. And I'm volunteering myself, so the sooner that you can accept that, the sooner that we can get started. I mean, Emily, I really want to be here, okay? I need this! I appreciate your offer, but you have your own life to live. I can't ask you to get that out. No, sure you can! Okay, I want you to! What is that sound? That's her. The baby? She's coming. What do you mean? What is this sound? My daughter. Taken, isn't she? 
having her was the most significant experience of my life. Nothing else compares. Her birth, I had her in a fresh, warm water pool outside a friend's cabin in the Rocky Mountains. 10,000 feet up. There were no doctors, no nurses, just two awesome and supportive midwives. And Mitchell, of course. There were no drugs, no anesthesia. I wanted to feel my baby being born. I wanted to experience childbirth the way it's supposed to be. See, the medical industrial complex have hijacked childbirth, stolen it from women. They've taken a beautiful and natural phenomenon and transformed it into a surgical procedure performed in a cold and anxiety-induced environment. I didn't want to give birth to my baby with Dr. Frankenstein flashing a scalpel in one hand and the catcher's mitt in another. I wasn't sick. I was pregnant. And I didn't want to be treated like a sick patient. I wanted to be treated like a woman birthing a child. Childbirth is such a profound experience. It moved me like nothing else in my life. And you hear all this negativity from the medical industrial complex with conventional medicine. All this fear. How frightening it is. How dangerous. It's not frightening, nor dangerous. Not like you think. Not like you're left to believe it's going to be. Not if it's done in a warm and welcoming environment with supportive and loving people. Feeling that baby moving through me. Feeling that living thing coming into the world. As she was crowning, I began to, to convulse. All these sensations were pulsating through my body. I can only describe this experience as complete and total bliss. Birthing my child in a natural, organic way was the most intensely pleasurable experience of my life. And at the end was this beautiful, amazing creature, this beautiful baby girl. Mitchell and I were so surprised at how she turned out. She turned out to be more glorious than we expected. Everything worked out perfectly. She's an ideal baby. She's a good eater, as you can see. <laughs> Never really fussy. You're not a fussy girl, are you? <laughs> so Misha and I discussed about what we wanted as far as children. Most couples, they don't talk about it. They don't properly prepare. They just sort of conceive and let nature run its course. We wanted to make sure that our child had every advantage. So we used in vitro fertilization so that we could have more control over the conception. We decided not to use Mitchell's sperm because a family history of Alzheimer's. <laughs> they probably have a cure for it before she ever became systematic, but we thought, why take the risk if we didn't have to? We worked with a geneticist, a leader in the field of genetic modification. It's astonishing the things you can do. You can map out a person's entire genetic sequence. You can choose everything you can think of. Eye color, hair color, IQ, height, weight, artistic abilities, down to whether the earlobes are attached or detached, even life expectancy. <laughs> this beautiful baby girl will live to be 96 years old. So along with the wings, she'll have superior intelligence, a perfect height weight ratio, a somewhat introspective but optimistic disposition, and a beautiful soprano singing voice. She'll also be immune to all known cancers, and she'll never need to be vaccinated. <laughs> That's right, no nasty vaccines for you. <laughs> You're staring at her wings. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> They're wondrous, aren't they? They're not permanent. They'll fall off, like baby teeth. But their legacy will be evident in her free spirit. My hope is, by her having wings, they're flying. And the freedom that flying creates, she'll grow up to be fearless and confident. As I stare at her beautiful little face, 
and think about all the things, things that, that I want to be, but I couldn't. All the things that I want to achieve, but never will. And all these things will be attainable to her. Are you all done? Already? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 